Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, a bit of introduction about ARC. Uh, we are a B2B financing platform. And what we do is that we work with software businesses to offer them financing. And so in order to achieve that, we connect through a variety of APIs to uh, receive financial data about the companies. So I'm going to talk a bit about how we do that uh, in terms of uh, the unified data model, some of the unified data models we're building. And so the overview of the presentation today is that I'm going to do a quick product demo just to see, just to show you what the customers see in the product and how they onboard to the ARC platform. And then I'm going to uh, talk a bit about uh, the unified data model that we've built specifically around the banking data. Um, and just a quick uh, overview of the product. So ARC today, we started with the ARC events, which is the revenue-based financing product that we offer uh, software businesses. And we launched that last year. We've grown that since uh, um, over the past uh, year or so. And uh, a couple of months ago, we also, a couple of, I think at this point, two months ago, we launched the Art Treasury product. So which that is a deposit account for uh, the same customer profile that we are targeting. So the idea is to offer like an integrator experience. And that uh, is not something I'm going to talk about talking about today. I'm going to focus on mostly the ARC events. So I'm going to quickly jump into the product demo now. Um, oh, let me just uh, close this. Yeah. So this is uh, what the customer sees when they first come to the ARC platform and they uh, sign up for an account. So I'm just going to quickly fill up some of these options here. Um, And when when they are requesting for uh, when they are starting an Arc Events application, we also ask them for some basic qualification problem uh, questions. That helps with our sales team. Um, and this is the screen that kind of uh, I want to spend uh, uh, some time on. And so uh, what it is is that uh, you know we get our customers to sign an NDA uh, to help them feel assured that their data is going to be protected, and uh, we ask for API credentials to a variety of different services that they uh, leverage. And so uh, to get a uh, take on their financial situation. So with each of these uh, data types, we have implemented multiple providers. So as you all know, there are many different aggregators today with different service offerings, uh, different coverage for each of these uh, areas. Probably the most developed in banking and then accounting is now kind of like a growing area. Uh, and billing a subscription probably being the newest uh, area of expansion. So with banking, we connect through a variety of different API providers, uh, and we basically have done some work around what we think is the best for each uh, particular bank that our customers use. So here I'm just going to do a quick demo with the flat sandbox. Um, and so you know, in the sandbox environment, I'm going to do Capital One. Uh, they have this OAuth. Demo flow. Yeah, so now that's connected and this connects right away just based on the credentials being valid. But if we look in the back end of the app, uh, so we use a GraphQL API and you can see right now that there is an there is a bank connection that's been made. The institution is Capital One. Uh, the company, as you saw, was Huli and, and the user is Raven. Okay. And if we refresh this query, we see that some amount of plat sync data sync has happened. Uh, the plat, uh, the bank account has not been populated with the sandbox uh, account from plat. And at the same time, we have this concept of a data event. And so um, here we see that there was an event that the first event was an added integration for plat banking. The second event is a successful uh, data sync that created 193 transactions. I'll talk a bit about why we have this concept, um, but if you if I just refresh the query, you see that more plat uh, sync successfully happened, and so that's uh, you know plat provides a few different asynchronous updates that we we check for and, and aggregate. So that's that's accounting, that's uh, banking, and then now we can we can go on to accounting. Uh, and so with accounting, uh, right now 
for a lot of the providers that we support, we use Codet. Uh, we are working with a few different partners at the same time and evaluating how we want to evolve their strategy. Uh, so at same thing, I'm going to use the Sandbox account on Codet. And do a medium US company. Okay. So Coda is going to take a bit to, I think, uh, provide that asynchronous update. If we go back to the back end here, let's see. Um, data events, there's nothing yet. Uh, yeah, okay, now it says it's connected. I rerun the query. And we see here that um, there, was a, there was a number of successful syncs involving, you know, balance sheet updates, uh, PNL updates, and then there was an initial event that says that, you know, this was a successful integration uh, of the accounting data. Uh, finally, I'm gonna do billing and subscription. And so this is where we have uh, done a bit of legwork in-house to support the different major vendors that our customers use. Uh, I'm just gonna do a demo with Stripe, with a test key, and I'm gonna save. And that's connected successfully. And we see here in the data sync, that is uh, also a successful Stripe billing integration added. Um, this will take some time, a bit more time to sync just because the invoice of data tends to be uh, slower in terms of the API that the different vendors have implemented. Um, yeah, and from our customers, this is typically what we ask for. Uh, they can also provide us with additional uh, documents, information that might be helpful to the underwrite, but typically the minimum requirement we ask is to have the banking and accounting live connections. Uh, and then billing ha it has been very helpful where they are available for the certain for the types of customers that use um, one of these payment providers. So here I'm going to complete the application. And that's where the user gets put on a, on a waiting screen. On the back end, all that data flows into a dashboard that we uh, ultimately create a decision around. So I'm gonna jump straight to that and update the account here, refresh. Yeah, so that's like typically what the customers see when they come back later with, you know, they receive an email saying that their offer is ready. They come back to their account and they're able to see the offer in terms of the cost to them to take out financing and they can you know, choose to request some amount of financing up to the maximum limit that we have set. Um, and they have the option to fund that into their existing bank account that was connected through one of the API integrators, or they can choose to fund it to treasury, which is our uh, deposit account product. And that, if they haven't set it up yet, will bring them through an onboarding flow to set it up. Um, and the advantage of doing that would be that it, there's no ACH delay. So uh, if they have already have the account set up, they get access to the funding pretty much uh, right away upon our approval. Uh, and that's uh, usually a fairly fast turnaround. So that's um, the customer view of the, of the onboarding flow, plus really, you know, like the, um, the, what what they experience in order to provide us with that data. So now I'm gonna jump back to uh, let me see this zoom bar is a bit in the view. Okay, um, gonna just jump quickly to uh, take a look at the data that we are getting from our customers. So here I'm gonna copy this company ID that I just created. I'm going to go to Looker, which is uh, what we use to look at in, to inspect and, 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 and do various analysis on our, our uh, data backend. And here I just ran a query with that company ID. Uh, and so these are the set of transactions that was just synced uh, through Plaid. And so here you can see that there's a few concepts here that we have built out over time in, in the idea that we, we are doing is that we are trying to uh, aggregate data from a few different sources, normalize that data, and make sure that um, you know, we have an idea of what is a canonical bank transaction. And so part of that involves creating 
uh, unique IDs from the different providers, which is what we mean by ARN. And uh, part of that involves, you know, some of this uh, merchant name and uh, various uh, pieces of metadata that we that we uh, clean up and aggregate across different uh, providers. Uh, ultimately, on the back end, uh, we we uh, we aggregate all these concepts from providers like Plat, Finacity, uh, and and others into into shared data structures that our uh, infrastructure is built on. So I'm gonna jump jump to talk a bit more about that uh, and what we call here the unified data model. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the three data sources that we care about a lot right now are banking, accounting, and, and billing data. Uh, we've done similar work and infrastructure around each of these uh, data sets, uh, data types, but uh, today I'm gonna focus on banking. And with banking data, the, the ideal flow that we were trying to achieve is that um, we want to select the best connector. And the reason for that is because um, we not only underwrite customers on a one-off basis, which a lot of these connectors were originally designed for, we sync, we sync that data on a continuous basis for customers that we have an active outstanding transaction with. And that helps us to monitor risk. It helps us to also uh, upsell and discover future opportunities for our collaboration. Uh, and so we, uh, in general, try to optimize for selecting connectors with banks that have long-term stable recurring connections. And so we, we want to receive those updates through webhooks. We want to enrich that data, as I, as I mentioned, in terms of you know, categorizing them, thinking about the types of merchants that they're using, uh, the types of transactions that they are performing. And then ultimately we want to generate metrics that help us um, create a fast overview, historical overview of the company's financial performance over time. And uh, as a result of that overarching uh, uh, objective, I think there are a few goals that we, we set out to achieve on the engineering side of things. So uh, one is that we wanted to make sure that whatever, whatever unification, unified model that we build, it's usable in a lot of the different uh, layers of the stack that we leverage today. Two major ones are the API backend. So we use a TypeScript-based ORM and the data visualization analytics tool, which we use Looker for. And so that's the idea here is that ideally, however we unify the data should be available to all these different sets of tools. And then secondly, we want to preserve the raw data from the source. Uh, we want to make sure that everything is traceable to the origin. Third, we, we you know, cache consistency, consistency, performance, like whatever sort of data processing we do, we want to make sure that the source raw data and the unified model are going to be close, closely staying in sync. And then we are thinking about query performance in terms of, you know, when we actually do this analysis, uh, how do we do it live and, and make sure that it runs well. So the ultimate approach that we end up with is, uh, you know, as you saw, we built this idea of a shared data event. We uh, abstracted a lot of the different event types that different providers give us into this unified data event that we act on, that we build services around, that we notify on. And um, the way that we unify data today is using virtual SQL views. Uh, the approach was just selected because it's compatible with the majority of the tooling that we use. Uh, Performance-wise, over time, we uh, we anticipate uh, leveraging SQL uh, virtual ta uh, physical tables, materialized tables to to gain better performance there. And then over time, I think we will have to build a more layered approach uh, to increase increase performance. And then ultimately, we also have uh, we also maintain separate tables for the different raw data providers. So we may, we keep original data from each of those sources, uh, but we build logic around the unified view. This is the last slide, and this is just like a quick overview of like what I mean by the unified architecture. So all the logic and all the backend services work only on the unified models and the places where that devi deviates is really on the front end, where we need to provide a custom user experience for each provider and the database 